Mark, why don't you introduce our next guest? Sure, Jeff. This is a honor. Um, I want to introduce Marsha Kazarogian. Marsha is a uh, founding partner with Kazarogian, Costello, and O'Donnell. And uh, she also is the, uh, the new president of the Mass Bar Association. Well, congratulations. Welcome. Marcia, thank Marcia, you. Marcia. You're oh a busy man, person. Oh, man, you're not going to do that to me. <laughs> no, thank you so much for having me here. Well, tell us, tell us about you know, the firm, what your practice is, and why did you take on this job at the Mass Bar? You want me to do a narrative? Yes. Okay. Let's throw um, Doug Chef under the yeah. bus. <laughs> <laughs> because someone had to get it away from Doug Chef. No, um, well, my practice, I do a lot of litigation. I do civil rights litigation. Um, I do whistleblower uh, litigation in the federal court, and I also do a lot of domestic relations. I've been around for a long time, so I've done a lot of different things. And uh, this past January 2014, I uh, formed a partnership with two of my very close friends, Walter Costello and Kathleen O'Donnell. By the way, Kathleen O'Donnell is a past president of the Mass Bar Correct. Association. Oh, you're hanging out together. We're hanging out together. We, we, uh, uh, we realized we like being president of Bar Association. So <laughs> and Walter Costello, actually, and Kathy O'Donnell, and myself uh the three of us have all been president of the mass academy of trial attorneys so for some reason we just kind of glom together and we've been in partnership ever since uh, so that's been working out very well um, they do a lot of litigation they do personal injury um, liability cases you know in the older days years ago the government didn't step into your household um, but nowadays what has happened i think is that government has had to step into households because people don't discipline anymore what's happened is people abuse so there's a difference between discipline and abuse and now it's hard you can't ask the government to sit back and make the decision when is this discipline and when is it abuse there's got to be at some point but a bright line but maybe. the government has stepped into homes and I'll, yes. I'll go to another area I mean abuse of a little child a child has no defense right right abuse of you know when I was younger abuse of women uh, was more common in the home as mm -hmm. well it wasn't just children it was spousal, and it was much more right. common as well. Right. And, and you're saying the government now is stepping into the home. So there, there's a moral issue, and then there's a political issue. I guess it all gets kind of messy, and you're in the middle of all of that? Well, yeah, because I think a lot of times in any – what the home used to be sacrosanct for what happens at home stays it at home. It was your castle. Uh, it's my castle, usually the man. I'm the man. It's my castle. I'm going to yeah. deal with my house and my wife and my kids the way I want to deal with them. Well, I'm, you know, things have changed. What What caused you, or or what yes. gave you the desire to enter? You have some such an interesting background. And civil rights you know, too. With uh, civil yeah. rights, gender discrimination. You also at one point um, defended one of the teenage boys in the Pam Smart case. You have some. I mean, you have this. I'm all over the map, uh, aren't but, I? I'm but okay. it's all a consistence of litigation <laughs> right. and yeah. crim sort of a criminal. But it also has it's sort of cutting edge stuff. And it's I not the traditional. You've sort of taken <laughs> that that. Well, I I can tell you that for example, I when I first started practicing, I wanted to be in the courtroom. My father wanted me to do real estate, but I used to sneak out and do criminal defense work. And so I started doing that. And then as I started getting my own practice and clients coming in when I started practicing, I found that m uh, men wanted to hire women lawyers when they did their divorces because they thought that made them look right. more sympathetic for some reason. Right. They didn't care that I'd never done a divorce, so I right. started doing domestic work. But I still kept my criminal defense background. Um, it must be a boom for your, uh, this time for your practice because uh, you know we've had the Anti-Defamation League on the show, and mm -hmm. they've told us that... Uh, Anger and hatred are at epidemic proportions and are on the rise. And so you must be seeing that from a lot of different perspectives because you mentioned, you know, even, you know, uh, police abuse. Yeah. So it must be, it, it, at it some level, I understand it's a profession, but it must be concerning at another level for you. Oh, it is. I mean, I, I, I see it in many ways because we do a lot of, um, well, when we do discrimination, we do employment discrimination. And unfortunately, because of the times, not just the anger, but unfortunately, the economics, you see people that are, no, are losing their jobs for whatever reason, and they're angry about it, but they feel that someone is to blame and someone should be held accountable. Well, unfortunately, sometimes there's a reason why someone doesn't have their job anymore, and it may just be economics, and it's right. not something that's a lawsuit. And, that's right. the unf and more times than not, that's the message that I have to convey, and it's not an easy message to convey.